Well, something just exploded on it. Something's running with it. And I think that was a shark. Not the tarpon. Oh no. It's running with it. Doesn't even know it's hooked yet. There we go. Right underneath me. And now it knows it's hooked. Cool. Now it knows it's hooked. Jump, be a tarpon. Oh yeah! Yeah! Never know. This is a big old boy here. Yeah! Yeah! Hey everybody, how we doing today? So, I don't want to catch tarpon today, right? Three tarpon in three days is enough. Man, they beat the crap out of you. But that doesn't mean that we can't do something tarpon related. And it's something I need to do, which is create a tarpon box. Which is to get all my tarpon accessories put together, put in one box. Um, one of my bad habits, and you've probably seen it in these last few videos, is I'll go out to the backcountry and I'm like, oh, look at the flats. I'm going oh, to go chase after some bonefish and permit. And then I'm like, oh, I, once I do that, then I'm going to go over to the mangroves. I'm going to catch a couple of mangroves for dinner. And then, oh, I'm going to go after that. I'm going to go catch a big tarpon. What you don't realize is that I'm heading out there about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. So I only have like four hours. And then I run into problems because things don't work out. I have problems catching this, catching bait, finding fish, so forth, and it really screws me up. I've been real lucky lately, but uh, that's not the best way to do it. So one of the solutions for that I think I'll do is create this tarpon box. So those days when I'm going tarpon fishing, I'll just grab that box, grab my two tarpon rods, and I'll head out there. And then even though I see permit, tail end, bonefish swimming all over, I can't go after them because I just have my tarpon gear and I'll put my full focus on catching those tarpon and I'll think that will make me a lot more effective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the store, pick up a few things that I need and then I'm gonna go through all my little holes where I've got all my stuff spread out because I'm going out there and I wanna use certain stuff and I don't, I've got part of it here but I don't have the other part and it's just a mess and then just try to get everything organized into one box so when I'm ready to go, grab that box and I know everything's there. So anyways, that's the plan. So here's my local West Marine. This is the new one downtown. All right, we're back and I went through all my stuff. I think I grabbed everything that I need. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I'll add it as I get it. But I got to get all this stuff kind of sorted and to fit in this box. So let's get started. All right, to store everything in, I picked up one of these Plano storage boxes here. They're somewhat water resistant, have an O-ring, but primarily when it's closed, the water gushing over the top won't uh, 
get in there. Uh, it's not really submersible, but it'll do the job. I've already got one that I'm using and I like it a lot. Fits right between, behind the seat, between the seat and the uh, motor mount perfectly, so we'll be using that. And then for other storage containers, I've got these guys. Uh, one I'm going to put my tarpon hooks in, the big hooks in it, and the other one I'm going to put all my um, bait catching gear in it. So the tiny hooks um, actually fits my leader, so I'll put my leader in there, swivels, the tiny weights that I use. So everything affiliated with uh, catching bait I'll have in one of these, so that'll keep those organized. I usually like to use these things, the little snack uh, containers, they're waterproof as well, but uh, couldn't find any this time, but I like these screw tops, so I'll be fine with those. All right, starting with our bait catching container here. Um, basically, I stick a paper towel on the bottom of it, and what I'm gonna do is add the hooks and the swivels, anything metal, and then I'm gonna get some WD-40 or a corrosion stop or whatever, and just spray the whole thing down and basically saturate it. What that'll do is prevent rust. So uh, anytime you go into your little hook box and then you grab your hook out, you always inevitably touch the other hooks and you get moisture in there. And a week or two down the road, you end up with a ball full of rust. So by spraying that oil in there, it coats those hooks and swivels, but then also it saturates that pad. And then as it gets jostled around, it constantly uh, keeps those things coated in oil. So even if you drip salt water in there, it won't allow it to rust because it'll constantly have that oil mix. Um, so I've got a bunch of tiny swivels. So I'm gonna throw those in there. Uh, I've got my number 12 long shank and uh, standard little gold bait uh, hooks there. Uh, the long shank is uh, easily removable, so when they swallow it, you can still get at it to remove it. The small gold hooks I use when bait's being very finicky are uh, it's harder to catch, and then I'll switch to those. So I'll take them out of the package and put them in there. Uh, I've also got a bunch of little, I don't know what size weights these are, but really small weights. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing pinfish, when I want to be able to cast it out and let it sink, and slowly bring it back, that I'll, uh, I'll use these little weights. So those will go in there as well. Um, I mentioned I have my little four pound trout leader, that'll go inside there. And that's pretty much everything I need. Um, if I, even if I forget my uh, uh, bait catching rod and reel, I could use my tarpon setup and just attach a light line to it, the light uh, four pound to it with the swivel and the weight, and I could use those to catch the bait so I'm never out. So. That will be my bait catching uh, container there. So let's move on to hooks. Next, we're gonna do our tarpon hooks. Same deal with the container. Put the paper towel in there, spray them down to kind of prevent the corrosion. Uh, I generally use two hooks, the seven knots or the five aught. Uh, I always recommend not matching the hook to the species you're chasing, but match the hook to the bait that you're using, especially when you're using live bait. So when I'm doing the big mullet, uh, uh, blue crab, a uh, uh, full size uh, pinfish, I'll use the seven knot. But let's say I've got smaller pinfish or using pilchards, then I'll use the five knot because I want to kind of keep that balance there. Actually this year, and I've been testing it already, is moving up to like a nine knot for when I'm using those 12 inch, 10 to 12 inch size mullet. Um, I think going up to a larger hook will uh, help out as well, but I've always used these seven knots for everything and they've always worked fine. So it's just something to play with. So I'm gonna load those in there, spray them down and our hooks are ready. All right, let's talk leader. Now, if I had just one option, I would 100% just pick 60 pound. It's just a perfect balance. But my alternatives, I also like to add a 40 pound, um, especially if I'm throwing artificial baits. Uh, it's a little bit thinner, it's gonna make a smaller knot going through the guides. Plus uh, when they're a little bit more spooky, uh, clearer water, um, I'll like to scale down the leader, so 40 works out great there. Uh, also, if I'm just uh, chasing little smaller teenager ones where I don't need that extra bulk of line, the 40 works fine there. Uh, on the other circumstances, if I need to land a tarpon, uh, whether it be shark infested waters or like uh, the first couple of tarpon videos, I like to get the thumbnail of the tarpon just to kind of get that out there. And then uh, I'll use 80 pound um, because I want to just be able to bust them, break them, land them, get my thumbnail picked, and then I'm good to go. But realistically after that, I'll go back down so I can break them off easier. But uh, I think in this instance, I'm gonna put 
60, 40, and uh, I might even throw in a 30. Um, 80, I've already done my thumbnail, so I'm done with that. So I probably won't be using those unless I do some night uh, mullets where there's a lot of big sharks out there where I wanna kind of force them in. I'll run the 80, so that I'll just throw in as I need. Next, got to throw in the bobbers. Uh, I got these nice new ones ready to go. The, the other ones I've got are all cancerized. Uh, I just find them out in the mangroves and stuff, so I use those throughout the rest of the year. But uh, I've got these nice ones all ready to go, uh, so I'll throw those in there. And that pretty much just covers my live bait, dead bait, tarpon fishing. It's basically a line with a hook on the end of it. Um, I might throw a bobber midway to kind of float a bait or whatnot, but really it's just leader and a hook. So it's pretty basic. So that's, that'll cover that there. So now let's talk about artificials. For artificials, my go-to are the hoagies and the nine inch I've got in black or white, or I've got the seven inch in a bubble gum. Uh, for just general throwing, I like just throwing the bigger baits there, um, especially when I'm working at uh, the top water. That's where the hoagies really come into play. Or the smaller 7-inch bubble gum, when I see tarpon laid up on the flats in shallow water where they're just sitting there waiting to ambush something, uh, the 7-inch makes less of a splash, so it's less chance of uh, spooking them, but still a big enough bait to uh, make them very uh, appetizing. Um, I match those with the uh, hoagie swim bait hooks with the corkscrew adapters there. Um, I usually go with the a dot or the 10 knot depending on the different sizes of the hoagies. Uh, I'll also carry the all about the bait 9 inch paddle tails uh, in the black with the pearl body or the all white. Um, I've got the rigging kits for nose rigging them uh, as well as the ones the uh, lead uh, belly weights to allow them to swim uh, correctly there. Uh, these really work very well during the uh, magic hour when those mullets start moving out of the uh, shallow water and along the mangroves out into the deep water channels and those tarpon are just waiting on them to bust on them. So when you're seeing those big old explosions out there in the distance, that's generally those tarpon busting on mullet. So that's where these really come into play. Uh, when I'm just basically just blind casting and just throwing something during the day, uh, I like the five inch all about the bait paddle tail there. Match those up with the uh, four aught two X strong uh, all about the bait uh, fish head jig heads, and those will work perfectly and uh, handle a big tarpon as well. And a few miscellaneous things that I'll throw in the box as well. Um, I've got these little lens wipes. They're just basically little alcohol wipes for cleaning my sunglasses, especially when I'm sight fishing on the flats for those tarpon. Need to be able to see clearly. Um, I'll throw in a spare set of scissors. Um, I have on my kayak, I've got the D-Hooker 5000, I've got a knife, I've got the big handled uh, D-Hooker. So that general stuff I keep on my kayak all the time. Uh, and then I'm also gonna be testing, I've got, I found these when I was looking for my tarpon stuff, some little power bait uh, nibbles. Um, a lot of people use um, fish bites. Um, I should order some of those, but I think I'll test these out, see if they'll work for the pinfish. I'll keep those in the box. Um, if I'm out using mullet or blue crabs or something, but I'm just not getting bites and I want to pick up some pinfish and I didn't bring my chum bag and uh, squid roll to be able to catch them, I'll always have some sort of little side bait that I can use to catch pinfish. So I'll throw that in there as well. Now, if I'm gonna go after a tarpon on the fly, I've already got my fly box all set up there. I've got pre-made tarpon leaders, plus all my flies in one box, so that's ready to go. Now I just gotta get out of the bad habit of doing both, because I'll always offset to trying to use my standard gear, because I'm pretty sure I'll catch one that way, and then usually I allot whatever time's left to go by fly. But if I really wanna be serious about it, I just need to disregard the tarpon box, just being my fly rod, the fly box and then that's it and that's really a good tip for you guys that are coming down to fish the keys and it's spe specifically if you have a certain species that you want to catch to for a bucket list fish or whatnot so if you're coming down to tarpon fish i'd highly recommend kind of doing this and just bring your tarpon gear and try to not get lose your focus because there's so many other things that there's a possibility but a lot of times people will come down with a, I'm going to catch this, 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 this. And they go out there and they get distracted and they start spending a little time here and there. And they end up not really accomplishing anything. 
So uh, tarpon, uh, if you're coming down here with a guide, you're pretty much set. If you're not, you're just going to do it on your own and you're not familiar with it. I'd a lot two, three, five days, a full week just to get that tarpon. Um, it is a very challenging situation. If you get them in two days, you get them in one day, that's great. Then pick your next fish and move on. Or just come down with, I don't care, I just want to bend a rod, have fun. That's the best way to do it. And just have these things ready just in case. So always an option. So anyways, that is my tarpon box all ready to go. So now all we got to do is catch some more tarpon after I rest for a while. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.